This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We get to close out week number six in the NFL on a pretty high note because we have got the Dallas Cowboys heading to Los Angeles to take on the Chargers. Austin Eckler is back off his injury. We get to see uh, Tony Pollard. We get to see Keenan Allen, Justin Herbert, all these fun guys in the same game all at once. We're going to break down that game with Ryan Williams. Pick his brain on his favorite props at FanDuel Sportsbook. Talk about the spread in this game and the total and get you ready for what should be a fun Monday night affair. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Joined here as I am every Monday by Ryan Williams. Check him out on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. Ryan, it is a pleasure to get you back on the show for today. How you doing? Oh, we're doing great, Jim. We're, do- we're doing just fine. I'm-, I'm happy to be back on the show. Noah was held down for me. Um, but yeah, we're, we're back here. It's uh, We're just wrapping up week six. Uh, we got we got a fun one ahead of us on on an island game, and we're hoping that uh, it, it goes the way that we want it to, and not like the past uh, Monday Night Football games have gone. Yeah, we've had some rough ones for sure. Uh, this one I am uncomfortable with, which we'll discuss once we get to the discussion around. Um, the way the market has not moved in my favor, it hasn't shifted against me. I thought it might move towards me here, but it hasn't. So I'm going to talk to you about that. Talk to you, maybe, you know, uh, bring me back down to earth a bit about why this hasn't happened. We'll break down this game overall and talk to you about some props we like as well over at FanDuel Sportsbook. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. We are here every weekday breaking down uh, the NFL. Tomorrow we'll have our first look at NFL week number seven. Also talking to Ryan about futures there. and. Very uh, plump discussion there, given the way things went down on Sunday with the Eagles, 49ers, and more. And, of course, Wednesday is college football. Thursday, the full NFL preview. And then Friday, talking player props and MLB as well. All right here on the Covering the Spread podcast feed. So go search for Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. You can also find these shows on FanDuel TV+. Plus and the FanDuel YouTube page. Snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook right now. New customers can get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, totals, and more. So visit FanDuel.com and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager only, $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler. Or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text Next Step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777, or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700, visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana, Visit MDGamblingHealth.org in Maryland, 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia, 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit GamblingHelplineMA.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and Y in New York. Let's dig in now to this Cowboys and Chargers game where right now the Cowboys are one of the point favorites and the total is 50 and a half. Now, Ryan, I took the Chargers money line back on Tuesday, and I thought it would move in my favor because I honestly have this as the biggest value bet of the week is the Chargers money line. It is not budged, so that's concerning to me. Do you agree with my view of this game, or do you think that the the Cowboys are justifiable favorites in this one? Yeah, I think um, 
it, it this one is a tough one for me, Jim. I, I got to be honest. Like this is probably the toughest game that that we've broken down um, all season for me. And the reason being is because you know you got Austin Eckler coming back for the Chargers. This is a home game for the Chargers. Like it, it makes me want to you know take the Chargers side of the ball. The Dallas Cowboys have been one of the most inconsistent teams uh, thus far in the league. I mean, at one point in in week four. We were talking about this team, you know, possibly being, you know, one or two in the power rankings. Um, and that's even with the, you know, with some injuries, you know, on the defensive side of the ball. The offense is just so consistent. They they have to show something um, tonight in this matchup because this is one of the most favorable matchups that they are going to get. The Chargers secondary uh, has not been the same. Uh, they've moved J.C. Jackson, uh, and they've been so vulnerable against the past. That I believe they, they're averaging about 329 passing yards per game. Um, you you would you know in a traditional year, I feel like we would think you know this would be a game for Tony Pollard to get going on the road, maybe. But I do feel like you know Dak Prescott has got to show us something here. It's going to be on on his arm. And that that all being said, like that makes me not, not want to necessarily take the Cowboys. I do like the Chargers money line here. Hopefully that Justin Herbert's, uh, you know, fingers feeling a little bit better. Yeah. Um, I know he's questionable um, at the beginning of the week for this game. He's back. But just getting a piece like Austin Eckler back, hopefully, you know, this this front seven for the Chargers, you know, if they're able to wreak havoc, this could be a long day for Dak. Um, shout out to Khalil Mack, shout out to Joey Bosa. Um, and I'm, I'm willing to take the Chargers on the money line here um, in this, you know, in the traditional markets. Now I will say, you know, 50 and a half for the, for the total on this game. Um, we've only had one game Monday night so far hit on the over. That was the Steelers and the Browns. And that game total uh, started out at 39 and a half under 40. Any games that have been over 40 and above. Um, and I believe this is, uh, this might be the second. No, I think this is the first 50 or, or higher over under game that we had. I believe the one at the start of the season was just under 50 with the Bills and the Jets before Aaron Rodgers uh, gets yeah. lost for the season. So, you know, uh, I believe these two teams met before in 2021. Uh, that game was a, projected to go over 50. Um, it was like a 27, 20 to 17 win by the Cowboys. I believe that was also in Dallas. Um, but I'm willing to go back on the under here and just think that we could get some, you know, we could get some sloppy play. We could get some drives that stalled out. Uh, and if these defenses do show up in, in the manner uh, that they can, as well as talent on paper, then, um, you know, we could be looking at, you know, a 24, 17 type of game. Well, this warms my heart because I had asked you about this, the money line and you gave me confirmation bias there. So that was great. But I also <laughs> have the under in this game. So, Ryan, we're in lockstep, man, uh, because I do like under 50 and a half. My model actually has this pretty well below this number, which is surprising to me because, you know, the Chargers defense, as you said, has been suspect. There's a downgrade uh, for the Cowboys with no Trayvon Diggs and it is indoors and having well i guess i can't say no wind because there is some wind at sofi uh but like having minimal wind typically is going to push that number up for me but it's a tight spread um it's not like the two best offenses in football by any means so i agree with you where i think the under here is very much attractive so we're both in alignment on uh the charges money line and the total under 50 and a half what could possibly go wrong with what being in agreement wrong? on those two things Let's talk about some props now, because you mentioned Austin Eckler is being back uh, for the uh, Chargers for tonight. Obviously, he impacts not just rushing props for himself, but also he's a big piece in this passing game, especially with no Mike Williams. Looking at the Chargers side of things, Ryan, which props are you eyeing for Monday night? Yeah, it, start, it starts and ends with Austin Eckler. I mean, you can even see uh, on the FanDuel Sportsbook, anytime touchdown, uh, Austin Eckler minus 220. Yeah. Um, so that's just how we've. Feel like he's going to be uh, right back into the mix. Um, I do think it is interesting to take Austin Eckler at plus one ninety five to be to have the most rushing yards in the game, mm. leading rusher. Um, it, you know, and that just kind of speaks volumes into if we think the Chargers are going to be if they're going to be able to win, we're taking the money line. Um, if they're able to kind of say, OK, let's make him the focal point. If this is, you know, kind of an uglier game, maybe Herbert's not able to find the guys through the secondary because of how Dallas plays. Let's just give Eckler the ball in his first session. 
back. Um, now, all it on the other side, I do think that, you know, if the Chargers, again, are putting up points, it's a better passing matchup for Dak. Like, I could see them just utilizing Tony Pollard in the past game, similar to how the Chargers used Austin Eckler. Uh, but, you know, they've shown us that, you know, even with Austin Eckler being the Swiss Army knife, first and second downs, if they can, you know, get him going, they will. Um, so that's a prop that I like. I know you're always on the rushing and receiving props. I find it really interesting that Tony Pollard is higher than Austin Eckler in this market. Like, that, to me, just kind of, speaks volumes into you know what we're expecting from the Dallas or what what everybody's expecting from the Dallas offense there uh 87 and a half feels low for Austin Eckler uh I will just say that I'd, I'd be willing to take that I wish the price that we were getting on it was a little bit better than minus 114 um so I'm gonna go with the rushing yards on Austin Eckler um and kind of let that be uh, in the receiving market or for the other guys like Keenan Allen's number is just way too high for me with with Eckler being back at 85 and a half. Um, I think there is some merit. Uh, if we do get, you know, Josh Palmer lines up. He's not currently up right now. I uh, would love to see where he comes in at uh, from the receiving. Uh, I'm sorry, from the receptions prop. I think four and a half for Austin Eckler is fair. Uh, it's minus yeah. 106. I would still be willing to take that um at that number i just feel like him being involved and in, you know they had the bye week to kind of get get right a little bit and so let's let's see what austin uh has got in the tank yeah uh going back to josh palmer he was added to the injury report on sunday which is odd because they didn't have a practice on sunday i don't think with a groin injury so um kind of popped up out of nowhere donald parham will play in this game i think that's also noteworthy with regards to gerald everett but um kind of waiting to see on what Palmer status is always pretty concerning when a guy is that late of an ad. So I like Josh Palmer. I hope he plays, but that is a bit concerning with regards to that. Going back to Eckler. I think that the reason to give a lot of merit to what you were saying about the Eckler to lead the game in rushing yards is we like the, like you said, we like the chargers on the money line and that does correlate here, but also this backfield sucked when he was out. Uh, right. Like they could not get anything going. And I think that can sometimes lead to like a desperation factor where you kind of need some juice and Austin Eckler has juice. So I think that that is where I see a bit of value there is because they struggled so much without him. They might lean on him a bit more. Now I know Eckler has always been a proponent of getting breathers, stuff like that. So like, he's not going to have a hundred percent snap rate, but my expectations for a snap right now are higher than they were before he got hurt, which is why, again, I think that there's also um, it's good that you brought up the rushing plus receiving because he can get there in two ways. 87 and a half. I agree. Feels a bit low because of absence of Mike Williams, because of the fact the running game struggled without him. So I think that like, although my, my baseline is I want to be skeptical and, you know, lean on some unders. I think this is a spot where we, Given the circumstances around Eckler's return, I do think overs are pretty enticing. So I think I'm on board of you, Ryan, where Eckler is a good guy to buy into for tonight, even though the market does respect him quite a bit. Uh, no, absolutely. I, I'm I'm willing to go uh, all, all in on Mr. Eckler uh, tonight here in his it. first action back. I'm on board as well. Now, you talked about Tony Pollard. Let's talk about the Cowboys side of things because the Cowboys, Ryan, have not played a normal game this year. They've either been getting blown out or they've been blowing people out. Like, they haven't had a full <laughs> forward quarter game yet, I don't think. So, like, I don't really know what this Cowboys team looks like in a normal game. So, I think that could create value with regards to their props. What are you seeing on the Cowboys side for tonight? Yeah, we have, we have no idea who uh, the <laughs> Cowboys team is. Uh, we, we really don't. They're Drexel and Hyde. Anybody who tells you they know who the Cowboys are, they're they're absolutely lying to you. Um, because as you said, we have not seen them. You know, it, it makes no sense. Like you are able to go out there and, you know, dominate the Jets who just beat Philly um, in, a, in a great defense there, put up 30 points against them. Uh, you get blown out by San Fran. You you know, New England is who they are. You lose to Arizona, who's really not that good. Um, it, it just really is just mind boggling what they've been able to do. So they come into the Chargers Monday night. Um, I, I do believe that it, it has to be Dak or 
for Dallas right now is through the passing market. It just the way that the Chargers have been giving up points um, to two receivers on this end. CD Lamb at 73 and a half. Uh, again, probably feels right, but, but I do think that this guy just. I mean, I don't, I don't know how, you know, Mike McCarthy wants to play this. And he's talked about, you know, getting to traditional football and that's been his thing, but like, we got to get Dak going. So let's get it going with CD lamb, uh, 73 and a half on the receiving yards, um, f- even five and a half, uh, receptions. Like it's minus minus one twenty eight. If he doesn't hit that number, like I, I he has not been the same um, since coming back from injury. And Brandon Cooks, you know, the guy who you went out and got in free agency, has not been able to show up. Um, so I'm going to lean CD Lamb. And then I'm also going to look at uh, Mr. Jake Ferguson. I, I'm not feeling his, you know, receptions total right now, albeit at three and a half, which is the number that I would like, but it's minus 138. Um, you're looking at his yards there at 35 and a half. Yeah, that seems kind of reasonable. Uh, but I do think that uh, it starts starts and ends with CD lamb there um, from the touchdown door market. Um, even, you know, uh, CD lamb plus one fifty to score a touchdown, Jake Ferguson being plus two seventy. you know, I, I, I do like both of those. Um, and then on the passing prop side uh, for Dak, normally, you know, pa- passing touchdown market is where I would go, but let's go to pass attempts and for him to throw over 35, ball that he's thrown or then he's thrown thrown 34 or more times in all but two games uh thus far this season and that was last week against San Fran and week one against the Giants when they put up 40 and uh the other score was zero. Um so you know they've been in these situations where Dak has just kind of got it going and especially if I'm not expecting only Pollard to be able to get going. Uh, let's just take Dax over on the pass attempts. I think that makes a lot of sense too, because it plays into what we were saying, where they haven't played a lot of normal games this year, which means we haven't seen like how many games has Dak Prescott not played the full four quarters this year as a result of, again, either them blowing someone else else out or getting blown out themselves. It's been quite a bit. So we'll probably see four full quarters of Dak tonight. Um, the one, Concern would be is that this is a uh, Kellen Moore, Mike McCarthy revenge game. Mike McCarthy might say, believe you, Kellen, run the football and uh, kind of pound Tony Pollard uh, as a result of that. I don't think that'll happen. Right. Just, you know, I, I love revenge games and figured we got to bring up Kellen Moore's name at some point here. I do want to go back to uh, you mentioned Jake Ferguson, because I think that that is actually an intriguing thought process here. Because uh, Peyton Hendershot is on IR and that may not sound like a big injury, but it's going to narrow down like they use three tight ends. If they go from using three tight ends to two, that could open up value in, I will say, either Jake Ferguson or potentially Luke Schoonmaker. Schoonmaker is plus 750 for an anytime (laughs) touchdown. Now, I was hoping this would be nine, 850, somewhere in there, but it's still at least interesting. I've not taken this yet. I... I don't know if I will, if I'm being fully honest, just because I was hoping it'd be a bit longer. But I think taking the approach of we're going to see more concentrated tight end usage in this game, I think that does help Schoonmaker. Now, I would say, Ryan, that you mentioned um, the Ferguson one, Ferguson at plus 270, probably the better bet between the two. But I did at least look at Schoonmaker. Um, haven't haven't gotten enough uh, interest in, in actually biting yet, but... I'm at least closer. Any other touchdown bets you like for tonight? Uh, no, that Schoonmaker one is nice. And I do expect uh, to be seeing you put some action uh, on that bet because <laughs> uh, that that is incredible. Um, I, I wish that, you know, I do find it interesting that, you know, the red zone usage hasn't been there for, for Tony Pollard. If they were to get, you know, on the one yard line, like I could see, uh, Dak Prescott being able to take one in uh, yeah. a four plus four fifty right now uh, in in the market, which you know it probably is fair um, plus four seventy. Excuse me, I wish it was a little bit a little bit better there, um, but yeah, yeah, that's one that I've kind of been eyeing um, just to kind of think about how things go and how uh, this offense is utilized in the red zone. It's surprised to see Justin Herbert is uh, seven to one. Um, I want to look at his rushing attempt number so far this year. 
he ran yeah. 12 times in the game before their bye and scored twice. Hmm. Um, yeah, and I think... Go ahead, Ryan. I, I was just going to say, I, um, you know, it's it's a health factor, I feel like, yeah. you know, if, yeah. and, with, and with Eckler being back too, <clears throat> which you would like to see that number just a little bit better, but, you know, it kind of kind of makes sense, kind of hedging there. Um, but yeah, if they, if they think that, you know, the finger is really bothering him or, you know, they don't want to risk it against, you know, a defense that plays pretty aggressively, um, then we can see that, you know, kind of, kind of take a, take a back seat. Herbert first touchdown score is 36 to one. Just gonna That's interesting. throw that out there. They asked him about his finger after the game. Uh, he said, it's just a flesh wound. And they were like, do you mean that? Or was that a Monty Python reference? He said it was a, Pyth- a Monty Python reference. It's like, it was literally not a flesh wound. Um, that's, but... <laughs> that's incredible. That's incredible. Uh, there were all like these reports when he's coming out that he's like kind of a weird guy. And I'm like, he seems great. I'm a huge fan. It's like, I don't know where those reports came from. Justin Herbert rules. I hope that he's fully healthy tonight because I want to see him. Uh, hopefully get this. this. This would be kind of fun. Again, I've not bet this. I want to be transparent about that. But 36 to 1 is not bad for Justin Herbert's score. The first touchdown of the night. Any other yeah. thoughts for you on this game, Ryan, before we close up shop? I was just going to say one quick thing, uh, and I want to pull this up real quick. So the Chargers right now sit at 2-2. Two and two. Uh, yeah. know that the AFC is very competitive right now, but this was a team, you know, this is always a team at the beginning of seasons who's kind of in the mix uh, for Super Bowl aspirations. Um, and just while we're talking about them, like if you think the Chargers have a chance of winning this game, like the Chargers right now, future to make the playoffs is plus 104. Um, you know, they'll be sitting at three and two. I think people will be thinking a little bit more highly of them, even though the Cowboys have struggled as of recently, but still just in the mindset of it's a Monday night football game. It's the game to close out week six. Are the Chargers kind of back, you know, especially depending on if the, if they win this game and how they win this game. Right. Um, it is an interesting bet to kind of to kind of make because I don't think they'll be um, plus money going into week seven. So, yeah. And I'm I was someone who entered the year pretty low on the Chargers, but like again, if I bet them tonight, that implies that I'm above market on them. So either that or below market on the Cowboys. But either way, I don't mind that either. So plus one of four for the Chargers to make the playoffs. An interesting look if you were on the Chargers money line with us for tonight. That is all that we have here for today on covering the spread. But as mentioned, Ryan is back with us tomorrow talking about the futures market. We'll talk about implications of this game, talk about implications of the 49ers and the Eagles loss and get you ready for week number seven as well. Ryan, uh, appreciate having you on here for today. Uh, Enjoy Monday Night Football. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow morning. Yeah, happy to be back with you, Jim. We'll see you next time. All right, find Ryan on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. I'm on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow. Enjoy Monday night. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 